Hello there, and welcome to this podcast series called Anchors in Life. And I'm really delighted to welcome Jane Cormack, a writer, retreat leader. Welcome, Jane. Thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed today. Hi, good to be here. Thanks yeah. for reaching out. So, Jane, uh, you are an author of the book, The Language of the Feminine, which I've read, enjoyed and benefited from. You're also a retreat leader. I know you've got a retreat coming up in November. It would be great to hear about that as well. And you also facilitate the online writers workshop, which you've named Hydrate, which I, I just love that name. And if you want to say something about that, too, that's um, that would be cool. So I know um, from your website that you that you're if you like your passion, one of your passions is to coax stories out of people. And I'll just read directly from the Facebook page, your Facebook page. You say, um, the stories people contain are so fascinating and it often takes encouragement and movement to coax these stories out. Um, now, I know from knowing you and also knowing your work and reading your book, that the natural world plays a big part in the coaxing out of people's stories. And I wondered if you would talk um, about the connection between the natural world and writing. So over to you. Yes. Um, well, the natural world is a place that I go personally for inspiration. Um, it is um, rich with you know, metaphor and myth and mystery. Um, and also, you know, science and other creatures, other species. Um, and I go to nature personally for many reasons. One of them is to center myself. One of them is to feel grounded, to feel connected to the world around me, um, to look at and listen and open my senses to being more present with uh, <clears throat> myself in the moment. And so because of that, um, nature is an amazing place to gain that inspiration for the written word. And there's the writing to be a connection between uh, creativity and um, a way to connect with nature. So it's a, it's a reciprocal relationship, the way I see it, um, because we all write to connect with something, but either writing to connect with ourselves um maybe we're writing to connect with spirit or god or something uh, divine um maybe we're writing to connect with the stories that we have lived or the stories that are living within us that um just need to be coaxed out as you said um and maybe it's writing to connect with the people around us or the natural world so Writing is an amazing tool of connection um, and being a, using that in nature, um, we're writing to connect with nature and deepen our bond and our relationship with the natural world. But we're also being infused by the energy um, of what nature gives to us that inspires our creativity and it inspires our creative expression. So it's kind of like a, a circle mm. um, of giving and receiving because, you know, we're, we're giving through our creativity when we uh, share it with others and share it with the world. So that's why I am um, one of the reasons why I bring nature and writing together um, and use that uh, as a source of inspiration, but also to have people go out into the world um, and to look around and to be present and to connect um, in a way that, you know, you can't really when you're sitting behind a screen for hours at a time. Um, and I'd say that's the moment if, when you're, you've been sat behind the screen for too long <clears throat> and it's easy to kind of get lost and scrambled and um, try to keep going. That's when I stop, go outside, go outdoors and shift my attention, shift my awareness to being in the the real 
that reality than in this sort of virtual reality that we're in right yes. now. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I really love how you have made what works for you, your work, um, you know, so your connection with nature through writing. And also it feels like it's a, it's a really nutritious thing for you to stop and use that shift of going out into nature um, for yourself. And I'll be asking you about um, that in line with the anchors in life subject in a minute. But I wonder if you could just say a little bit also about, for example, the retreat that you're running in November, in in actuality, in practical terms or reality, what, what would participants experience? Uh, what kind of, give us a flavour of a couple of things perhaps that you'd be facilitating. Yes, thank you. Well, that retreat will be at the Rewilding Centre in Dundragon, um, or the Dundragon Rewilding Centre, should I say, which is in Glen Morriston, which is just um, not far from Loch Ness, the west of Loch Ness. It's a beautiful location. It's the first of its kind in the world, the Rewilding Centre. Um, so it's a very special place, and it's surrounded by ancient pine wood um, and juniper forest and has thousands of species of plants and animals that uh, live there in the habitat. So um, I thought it was a perfect place to host a retreat, obviously connecting with nature through writing. So we'll be at that location and it's the 16th of November um, and we will we'll work with sensory awareness. So that means um, becoming more aware of the sense of smell, a sense of taste, um, the sense of touch sense of sight and going really deep into awakening those each sense um and as a way to open ourselves to feel and sense and see what is around us in a much more three-dimensional way um i also do something i call mindful presence which is about becoming present, but becoming fully present in the moment that we're in. Um, and I have some exercises around that to help people um, to let go of, you know, the day and the future and whatever's coming next and to really embrace the moment um, and experience the moment. Because when we do that, it's it opens us to more the words and the, the bubble up in a way that um, is different than if we just, you know, arrive and start doing writing exercises. So there's mm -hmm. a sort of um, preparation in a way to arrive in the space and to really be there, um, to really allow ourselves to be there. And what does it feel like? And, um, and then we'll, you know, we work with uh, reflective writing as well and use um, the relationship with nature as kind of a mirroring of uh, what 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 can we uh, learn about what's been mirrored in nature for me personally or, or for each person um, personally in that moment. Um, and then we work with creative writing as well. So moving more into the territories of um, the stories that live in us are the stories that are inspired and sparked by the environment that we mm -hmm. will spend time in. Um, so it's going to be, um, yeah, an enriching day in this beautiful environment um, from 10 to 4. Um, yeah, so it, uh, okay. welcome to anyone who's interested to uh, learn about connection nature through writing yeah absolutely and the details of that will be posted on the blurb below the video and also how to connect to you as well um and so what i'd like to do is just go back for a minute because the series that we're um part of here is called anchors in life and i can hear already that one of your anchors is to be in nature and feel that shift now, I know as a freelance person, and I know that you're freelance too, that time on, on the screen is just, um, 
it's almost inevitable these days and that I can certainly feel overwhelmed by technicalities, for example. Um, so I'm just wondering if I was to ask you, if you are in periods of overwhelm or restlessness or you're stressed, um, what is your go-to? How do you calm yourself, center and earth yourself? And I'm guessing that, you know, that's also, you know, when you're talking about uh, facilitating mindful presence, um, I don't know. I'm interested to know if that's part of it. So again, over to you for a little bit more of your personal practice of grounding and centering yourself. Well, there's not just one thing that I do. It's multiple things, really. And I change um, depending on the moment and the situation. So um, <clears throat> one of the things I obviously do is go out into nature um, and go for a walk or just sit somewhere um, and look around me and just do that mindful presence of just noticing the drop of water on the leaf or the way the clouds are moving through the sky or the quality of light, um, you know, on that particular day. So observing and looking at the world around me, it also takes me out of my head or overthinking or overstimulation because I'm purposely connecting with what I'm seeing around me in nature. Mm -hmm. um, I realize not everyone, you know, has access directly to maybe a wild nature spot, but, you know, parks and um, places like that are, you know, there's urban nature as well. Yes, so, um, indeed. And the other thing I do uh, is some movement, physical movement, to bring my awareness back into my whole body. So I'll do, you know, stretching or yoga or um, Pilates or five rhythm dance or any kind of physical movement that I love and enjoy that, again, gets me out of my head and thinking, overthinking um, and back into more awareness of my body. Um, and I'd say that as a final thing, I, I also bring my words behind my eyes mm. and remember that I'm, a, there's a being inside this body, so to speak, um, mm. because a lot of our attention, I think, when we're on technology is, uh, at the, the frontier, mm. and there's a lot of you know, uh, there can be pressure that builds up here. Um, but when we, when I personally bring my awareness inside my head, behind my eyes, mm. it's shifting my perspective mm. to see from a different place, from a different perspective. So um, I do that and I also bring my attention. Oh, you've frozen. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to carry on because I'm guessing that Jane will unfreeze. Oh, have I? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's no problem. Um, but I, what I'm really, because I hear that being in nature, etc. But what I'm loving is the practice of going, because we can do it anywhere, we don't need to come off, even move from our desks. Um, so what I was looking for was something that people can do uh, in the moment when they're, you know, rather than if there isn't anywhere to step out to. Um, and so I loved the looking at something or noticing in a slow way. So I then thought, well, OK, maybe we should make a practice of having something that we look at to anchor ourselves. Maybe that for visual people is, you know, just bringing a flower in or, a, you know, some grasses or something to have by the computer and just to spend some moments looking at something in more of a detailed, like mindful presence is a beautiful phrase, but being in mindful presence with that thing. But I also really like the thing of drifting, of moving our attention back to our the back of our heads. And I also do that. And I didn't know that you did that. So I'm wondering just for maybe one minute, if we could both do that and I'll time us. And you can e we can either just, I mean, this is a, I didn't know I was going to do this. So um, you can either talk us through it 
or we can literally just sit and anyone who's watching us um just to sit and have the experience of moving um moving the eyes back back in the head would you say how would you describe it um i would say it's more well like let's do it i can just talk yeah go for it please and i'll be silent so okay so yeah if you close your eyes and then just let yourself sink into your seat and just take a couple of breaths for a moment aware of your eyes and then bring your awareness behind your eyes the back of your eyes so you're inside your head behind your eyes Just what it feels like to have your attention there. You explore, if you like, that area behind your eyes, in the back of your head. Just have your attention there for a minute. If your attention, if you find your attention drifting or thoughts passing through, you just be aware of that and bring the awareness again back to that space behind your eyes. It helps to feel the actual um, back of your eyes as an awareness practice. When you're ready, spin your awareness up into your whole body where you're sitting all along your feet. And you open your eyes when you're ready. Just notice for a moment how you're feeling and when your awareness is resting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jane. Feeling really rested from that and centered and grounded. Um, yeah, what a gift. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I think 
and what you might notice is that we hold a lot of tension in our eyes, in our eye ball, and there's a lot of strain, you know, when we're looking at screens a lot of the time. So there is a restfulness when we bring that awareness behind the eyes and let them have a break, let them relax a bit at the same time. Yeah. So I've got a break. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes that's lovely. So we're coming to a close of the interview. And once again, thank you. And, you know, really blessings on your wonderful, wonderful work. And again, details will be posted with um, this YouTube video. Um, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for the good, great questions. You're very welcome. Bye-bye for now, Jane. Bye. Bye. Bye.